Four days away from the season, and FAMU is named their starting quarterback. No surprise here is Daniel Richardson. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor and current contributing writer at USA Today Saints Wire. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket via YouTube or YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We'll wrap up today's episode, and I like this one. We wrap up today's episode with a step into the Taj Smith era yes morgan state has officially named Todd smith as their starting quarterback prior to that teddy keaton has the most interesting form of motivation that i've seen in a long time he told everybody do not list his team as a top five squad on a division two ranks this was very interesting but i love the form of motivation now we kick off today's episode with something a little bit different than we thought we would and I'm happy about that because I wanted to kick off every single episode this week with something FAMU or Norfolk State related. And I think with FAMU naming their quarterback, the starting quarterback for the season, at least for the MEAC SWAC Challenge, I think that I have five opening segments of the two teams who are facing off, which are, of course, the Rattlers and the Spartans. Now, yeah, I do. I just did in my head. I definitely have enough. So we'll do Norfolk being under the radar on tomorrow's episode. But today I want to look at FAMU breaking the news on Monday evening that they will be starting Daniel Richardson against the Norfolk State Spartans. This is exactly what I expected. Um, and I know there's a lot of I expected, I expected, I expected. And I don't really say this to be a know it all. I don't say this to pat my back or anything. Just that's what I saw. And this is where I thought that it would go. And I'm going to go back about four months throughout the duration of this segment and look at some old quotes that made me feel like Daniel Richardson was always the leading quarterback in this. And I wouldn't say it's his to lose, but I think it quickly became his race to lose. It wasn't that way from the beginning, though. Um, it was reported that fam, you may make a decision by HBCU game day earlier on Monday uh, Monday morning. I've seen they may make the decision as early as this evening. And then what do you know? Lo and behold, Monday evening rolls around. Family puts up a post on social media saying that Daniel Richardson D. Rich is their starting quarterback. Let's reflect now. Let's take this back to April, the four months ago that I was talking about. There was an article that I read. It was probably about Gerald Thomas. G does a phenomenal work. Uh, the Geralds in the HBCU space are killing it. Gerald Huggins, my guy got his dream job at Morgan State, so show him some love, right? Y'all go tweet him if y'all haven't already, at Coach underscore Huggins, I-I, that's for the second. But um, And he also had Gerald Thomas, the writer at the Tallahassee Democrat, who he's been on the show before. He's killing it, and we're going to do another segment based off of one of his articles somewhere down the line this week, either tomorrow or Thursday. We're going to do another article or another segment based off of his article. But I think that this was something that he wrote in April, and the feeling I got from it, was that it was a two-man race for who's going to be the starting quarterback. Now, let's be very clear. What happens in the spring and what happens in the fall is not exactly directly connected. You know, there's a there's a summer session that can change a lot of things. You have players who could come in and could transfer, right? Like these battles specifically for quarterback, they don't stop in the spring. They carry on into the fall. And when they carry on into the fall, 
the person who you thought was winning in that time could not be the winner at the end. The, the two team race or the two man race that I thought that it was between Junior Miravitic and then also Daniel Richardson, you could have had another guy burst out of the scene out of nowhere. But that's not what happened. You end up having uh, Daniel Richardson as the starter. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I thought Miritovic and Richardson was a two man race for the quarterback battle. I took that directly from my notes from, I think it was like, I think it was like April 11th. I just looked at it earlier today. Um, but as soon as I came to this conclusion, because I did that after everything was said, I would say shortly after I came to the conclusion that it is Daniel Richardson's job, right? Like it wasn't immediate, but a little bit after, after thinking about everything, I began to feel like Junior was only in the race because he was here already. But Daniel Richardson was the one who was catching eyes. Sometimes when you have people who start at different levels, you can trick yourself into thinking that the guy at the bottom is rising faster. But the guy who's already up top, he's just at a more difficult level, right? Let's say you're on a, a, a game. It's got 50 levels. You start when your friend's at level 20. You're catching them super fast because you're going through all the easy levels, but he's getting kind of stuck on 21. He can't get past 23 for a little bit. So now you begin to catch him. But sometimes things you just haven't seen and quotes about players they haven't seen just sound a little bit more exciting. So I wanted to be careful that I didn't just come on here and be tricked by that. But I did have it in the back of my head. I wasn't confident enough to say it, though. I will say that. I wasn't confident enough to say it. This is what Coach Henry had to say about the two quarterbacks at that time. He said, Junior's been here for a while, really settling into the offense and does a good job of taking charge. He's starting to take the next step to be able to lead our football team. D. Rich has done a really good job learning quickly and has gotten a ton of snaps as an FBS starting quarterback. I think it was that last part because you've been here for a while. You're taking charge. Like, okay, that's cool. You're familiar. If we're talking about being in spring practice, these, these are all things that I expect you to do because you've been here for a while. I expect you to take charge. I expect you to know. But then you have this other guy who he's learning really quickly. This was me not trying to get tricked. But that last part about being a starting quarterback I'll take starting experience over being a backup in the system, right? Like that's just, if I'm just looking at them on even scales, I think being a starter weighs more than just being around in the system because I'm just going to trust the player who has starting experience to learn my system. And that's what I heard right there is that he's done a really good job learning quickly. You know, um, let's look at what James Coles, he said. He talked about how people want him to make a decision, how he's going to let it play out. He went all the way until four days before, or I guess five, because it was, monday at that time that he did it but less than a week before the first game i kind of thought he was going to take it all the way down to the wire i expected and had i not seen this this tweet monday morning i would have been preparing to say that fam you was not going to name a starting quarterback i don't mind being wrong but i'm thankful that i wasn't I'm, i was thankful that i didn't have to say that i would have waited a couple of days but that's kind of what i felt like was going to happen they were just going to be very suspenseful um but here's another quote from cozy back then he said they're commanding the offense oh here we go that's the specific part i'd rather have a quarterback who threw one touchdown pass and no interceptions than a guy who threw two touchdown passes and two interceptions so it just makes me wonder how risky will daniel richardson be how many opportunities will he try to take i know that he's a quarterback who comes in with fbs starting um experience do you trust yourself to say i know i can fit it in through there or do you understand that cozy being a defensive minded coach is going to be more on the side of you got to just play smart. I trust my defense. This is how defensive coaches are. I trust my defense. I just need you to not mess it up for us. It's simple. I trust my defense. You just need to not screw it up. And sometimes you, you, you tell your quarterback, just play it safe. I saw that. I felt like I saw that with Jameis Winston in 2022. Yes. 2020. No, 2021. I feel like I saw that in 2021 with Jameis Winston with the New Orleans Saints, where he was very efficient, but he was just trying not to make plays. So I wonder what style of offense you'll see Daniel Richardson play. This is the thing that excites me the most. Daniel Richardson is quarterback one for FAMU. They announced that. But he also came over to the Rattlers with his former teammate, Aceon Cobb. Now, I want to see if you have that initial chemistry with Cobb. I can see Cobb being the leading receiver for this team because of that connection that they've already had. That'll be very interesting to me because they both came over in the transfer portal together. So when you have that little bit of chemistry, it could then immediately show up on, um, on game one. 
And we see this with quarterbacks where they operate with players you have chemistry with early, and then you build chemistry with the other players. I could see this being an instantaneous match because they've done that before, and it could really pay off for the FAMU Rattlers. Now, as we push forward, I don't think people have problems, especially FAMU fans and everybody. Like, no one has problem with FAMU being listed as a top five team on the Division One HBCU ranks. But Teddy Keaton and Clark said, listen, do not, whatever you do, do not name us as a top five team. One person did, and Teddy Keaton has something to say about it hilarious motivation that will break down as we continue with locked on hbcu today's episode is brought to you by ibotta and i understand that you're probably trying your best to get those late summer vacations in it's not over yet you still got blistering heat i was looking at the temperature earlier today it was 103 degrees so you can still find somewhere with blistering heat if you want to go chill on a beach somewhere okay but then you got to get the sunscreen, might have to get some sandals, might have to get some beach shorts, may have to get a, a, a volleyball or not a volleyball, but a beach ball if you want to. All of those things, just make sure that you use the Ibotta app because it's simple. If you're going to go on this vacation, try to get money back. Lower the cost on yourself because the average Ibotta user gets $256 a year. That could cover a whole shopping trip if you wanted to. That could cover your next season or your next year's vacation. It's very simple. Over 2,400 brands and 1,000 real realtors, retailers, excuse me, allow you to use Ibotta. Right now, Ibotta is offering listeners $5 just for using the app and using the code Locked on College when you register. Go to the App Store or Google Play. You'll get instant cash back just use the code locked on college that's i-b-o-t-t-a in the google play or app store and use the code locked on college as we continue rolling on today's episode of locked on hbcu i appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day for your second listen Make sure you're checking out Locked On College Football because the sport is back and Locked On College Football Podcast kicks off the action with a live season premiere at 7 p.m. Eastern today, August 20th, now on the Locked On College Football 24-7 streaming YouTube channel. This is a four-part series covering each of the four major conferences, SEC, ACC, Big Ten, Big 12. You already know it's no longer the Power Five because the Pac-12 is disappeared now all four teams or excuse me all four conferences have teams who have a shot at the expanded college football playoffs be sure to check out this special streaming on the locked on colleges 24 7 youtube channel or amazon fire tv part of the locked on podcast network your team every day now clark atlanta head coach teddy keaton does not want any parts of being considered a top five team this is easily the most interesting and entertaining form of motivation that I've seen on the HBCU level in a long time. Let's remember who Clark is. Let's remember what Clark has achieved last year and in recent years. In the 2023 season, Clark won zero games. They haven't been that good as of recent. And I understand they brought in a new head coach, Teddy Keaton. He comes over from Allen. He comes over with a little bit more success, and there's reason to be optimistic about Clark. I don't think Keaton really wants you to be optimistic, though. Despite ending in 10th, or excuse me, being predicted to end in 10th place in the SIAC, it's not like the motivation or the hype train is rolling. But one person said, yeah, I think Clark's a fifth best team in all, or excuse me, fourth best team in all of black college football on the D2 level. Dr. Cavill said that the SI, excuse me, Dr. Cavill said that Clark Atlanta is a top five team on the Division II HBCU ranks. And Teddy Keaton said, I don't care that the SIAC themselves said that we're going to finish 10th. I can't let a piece of positive propaganda about my team go out without me speaking on the matter. And no, it's not because he actually thinks his team isn't deserving of it. No, it's not because he doesn't want anybody to believe in the team. It's a motivational tactic. This is for the guys in the locker room, of course, but to just come out there after the SIAC polls themselves said, that's the 10th best team in our conference. I've seen a couple of miscellaneous polls. I haven't heard great things about Clark or great expectations about Clark. So when one person comes out and says, this is a top five team, best team in their conference, you come out and say, this is rat poison. Rat poison is the part that's really killing me because 
you're not getting a lot of great publicity. And the one time that you do, you come out and you take the picture, you post it on your Twitter, and in all caps, you start off the statement with, this is, or excuse me, yeah, this is rat poison. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is, isn't even in all caps. It's just rat poison and everything out there afterwards. Excuse me. It's like Keaton saw this and was like, how dare you? He wants to make sure that every single person in that locker room is more focused on the failures and the people who are doubting them than any person who could believe them. I exaggerate you not. I genuinely believe that if they come in on Tuesday or they come in on Wednesday or they come in on Thursday, whenever they got to come in, it would not shock me if every single locker has the SIAC polls on it. And not the one that says that Clark's going to be number one. Not Dr. Cavill. It's going to be the one that says the SIAC predicts that Clark Atlanta finishes 10th because I believe that you're looking at a motivational tactic from Coach Keaton that says, don't read your own press clippings or don't read this press clip. That's the funniest thing about it is because when coaches do this, when coaches do this nine times out of 10, it's about the fact that everybody is praising you. We want to make sure that you don't read your press clippings. Like these are multiple instances. But in this one, we found 10. Nine times out of 10 is that. This is the 10th time. The time when only one person really says something good. Maybe I'm missing all the good positive stuff about, about Clark. Um, and this isn't to say that they can't be good. It's just the fact that this is not the expectation for them immediately to snap back. You get one press clipping. Don't read that press clipping. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Now, let's give the reasons on why Dr. Cavill could believe this, right? Because one thing I don't want to do or two things I don't want to do. A, diminish Clark Atlanta. I don't want to do that because I'm just going based off of the things that have been said. And I'm going based off of what you typically, when you typically see these type of rhetorics preached, it's not in this type of situation. And then the second thing I don't want to do is make it seem as if Dr. Cavill is just pulling something out of his butt or pulling something out of his neck. No, Dr. Cavill is the guy, right? Like he doesn't just say things just to say things. So you have to make sure that you, I have to, I have to make sure that it doesn't seem disrespectful that I'm saying he just, how dare you say Clark, no one else is saying that. Though I have seen limited people say it, I understand the reason you believe in Clark to take a step up. Clark comes in with a new coach, Teddy Keaton. I think we're familiar with him throughout this segment. They come in with a new quarterback, and that quarterback was the SIC uh, Offensive Player of the Year. He was dynamic. You're looking at a quarterback who could revitalize that program. You're looking at a coach who brought in multiple players from his team. If you're bringing in multiple players from your team, it feels less like. This is neither one is true, but it feels less like you're starting at Morehouse's spot at the end of last year and more like you're closer to Allen's spot at the end of last year. You're in the middle, so I don't want to make it seem like you're either one of the extremes. You bring over players from a better team than you were within the same conference, and a lot of them, your, your floor should raise, right? Other, unless you're just saying they're cursed. But your floor should raise. I don't think it's all the way at Allen because you're not Allen, right? Like you still have pieces that they have or they still have pieces at that school that you weren't able to grab, but you're probably better off. So I understand why Dr. Cavill could say, hey, I think they're going to be really good. I think they're going to be much better. You trust in the coach more. You have a quarterback. And that's all I really need. That's all I need. Quarterback, coach, I can feel good with just that. That's it. Nothing more. Um So I, I get it, man. Let's read this in general. I mean, in, in totality. Because this is hilarious to me. He says, and I quote, this is rat poison. Don't believe the hype. How does or how does Clark Atlanta rank in creating great practice habits? Great effort. Are we focused all two hours of practice? Are we focused in the meeting room? That will tell our true ranking. Dr. Cavill doesn't know any of those things. Like Dr. Cavill is not there for two hours of every practice. He's not. He can't tell you every single step of the way of how the practice habits and how the effort are. Maybe he's able to get to a few of the practices, but he's not out there every single time. That's why these are rhetorical questions. These are not statements and, and questions for Dr. Cavill or for the fans. These are statements and questions for the players. And he's right. He's right about how you find your true rankings, even if he's just, you know, being Captain Obvious in it. It's calling out to the team. It's not about you and I. It's not about. 
Vacaville. It's not about anybody else who's on social media. I gave it a retweet because objectively, me being called a top five team for probably the first time in this offseason and in calling it rat poison is one of the funniest things that I've seen in black college football, at least this offseason. At least. That's hilarious. Clark is getting some positive propaganda. He said, this is rat poison. They're trying to kill you with the hype. They're trying to kill you with the standards. Don't bite the belief. Ingest the hate. Ingest the disappointment. Ingest the failure. Because that's what's going to spur you to being great, along with great practice habits, along with focus, along with attention to detail. Like, these are the things that are going to, to propel you into greatness. But, man, when you talk about greatness, that's a great, air quotes, rant. Rant. By Teddy Keaton. As we push forward, the Taj Smith era is here. Morgan State has named Taj Smith as their starting quarterback. I know. Surprise, surprise. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and FanDuel is the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Football is here. You can sing the praises. You can play all of your favorite music because after this week, or not even after this week, starting this week, we will never have another weekend without football until February. Oh, my God. Thank you. Um, this, is, this is the best time ever. And to make it even sweeter, from now until September 22nd, all FanDuel customers, if you put down a $5 bet, will get a three-week free trial with NFL Sunday Ticket through YouTube and YouTube TV. This is amazing. I've been using the ticket forever and ever and ever. I want to watch every single game when I want to watch it, right? Like, I, that's me. I want to watch the game. When I was in college, I was getting a little student discount. That's neither here nor there. Make sure you go ahead and make some money at uh, FanDuel.com. Put some money down on week one. Week zero of college football action is here. Not only FAMU versus Norfolk State, you have Delaware State versus Hawaii. Let's get active on the HBCU front. Let's get active on the college football front, FBS level. All of that. Let's get active on the NFL and go ahead and go to FanDuel.com to make every moment more. That's wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU. I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day, every day, making it all the way to segment three. And I thank you two times for that. Thank you. Thank you. Morgan State has named Todd Smith as their number one quarterback. And I don't think that this is a surprise. We all knew that the player who ended last year as Morgan State starting quarterback, despite only playing a very few amount of games, was going to be the quarterback coming into this season. It, that, that should have been an expectation. I thought that he showed enough for me to um, believe in him. Honestly, the entire time that I talked about Morgan State, I don't think I ever spoke about Todd Smith not having the job. I talked about it like it was a, a finality already. Like it was just, and it, I think it was a inevitable action. I I knew this was going to happen. He he looked good at the end of last year in a season where nobody else really looked good. He does have some things that he needs to step up, and he's also just a true sophomore. He played five games last year. You're talking about a player who some were clamoring to hold him out to ensure that he would get a redshirt season. Because if you don't play a certain amount of games, you can get a redshirt. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about a player who has played that little amount of games. And when you play that little amount of games, you do, I, I do think you should still fight for your job. So I'm not upset at the fact that Damon Wilson had Todd Smith fight for his job. I'm not at all. I know I've had some things to say about other QB battles around the country, but in this case, despite the fact that I did think he was a definite lock to be QB1, I think his age and his lack of experience made the idea of him competing. I think it was smart. Iron sharpens iron for a young player, but then also makes him have to show consistency and makes him have to do it again after last season. So th definitely a smart move. But for me, I like him a lot. I really do. He was aggressive in the games that I saw. I think it was the North Carolina Central game. And I understand that they weren't able to come out victorious, but I love how aggressive he was going down the field. And I also love how despite being aggressive going down the field, it wasn't as if he was throwing a bunch of turnovers, man. I, I really do feel like he has the raw talent to be the guy. I really do think that Taj Smith, when you look at him, has the raw talent to become a championship quarterback. Will it happen this year? I don't know. I don't know if it happens this year. But what I can tell you 
is that he had five touchdowns, three on the air, two on the ground, one interception. He only had 85 yards. There's things that he needs to work on. He's still a fr- or excuse me, now a sophomore, but he was still a true freshman. Expecting him to be a finished product last year or judging him so harshly based off of last year's limited sample size and very, very limited of opportunity, I would say. I don't think that's fair. I'm going to take the raw ability and expect him to expand that and also expand the production. One thing that this does do is if Taj Smith is the guy that I think he is, that other people think he can be, I think they'll, yeah. If Taj Smith is the guy that I think he is and other people think he will be, he has the ability to be the only quarterback, young quarterback in the MEAC who's a franchise quarterback. What is that called on a collegiate level? I don't know. Yeah. That's interesting. That's really interesting. If Todd Smith turns into a solid quarterback, he'll be the only young guy who is a foundational piece in the MEAC. Central, that'll be over soon. You're looking at uh, Howard. Um, they still got to find their guy. Norfolk State, if it's Coons, Coons is out of there after this. If it's Jalen Daniels, I think he may have one more year of eligibility. I think he spent two, maybe, th- yeah, two, because he just came from the JUCO ranks. So two years of eligibility. After this, he'll have one. Delaware State, they'll have one with C.J. Henry. Like, you're going over this. He'll be the only player with multiple years of eligibility, more likely than not. And if he isn't, he'll probably be the best if Ty Smith is what we think he can be. This will be very interesting. I can't wait. I, As you can tell, I like Ty Smith. I like Morgan State a lot. I really do. They're probably my favorite team in that conference. If we're just not talking about to win it all, but just favorite team because they have my two favorite players – in the conference, specifically Eric Hunter. That's my guy. Elijah Williams, that's my guy. I rock with them as individual players, and I think that they have a super high ceiling. So it's easy for me to fall with uh, with Morgan State. And they're also on the interior, right? Like they're in the front seven, so it's a little bit different. But anyway, I think that the timing of all of this is a little bit important. It means a little something. I'm not going to overstate the importance of it, but it's important and it tells me a little something. In a in a day and age where everybody's trying to be gamesmen, in a day and age where everybody's trying to hold off, one thing I noticed is that HBCU quarterback battles. Now, nah, let me not even do that. I'm not even going to typecast them. Quarterback battles these days really do come down to the wire. And I don't know if that's because they're actually tight battles or because people just want to see so want to see the opponent not know who to game plan for. Maybe it's a gamesmanship thing. I think both are ideal or they're interesting they possible but in general they didn't do that here a week two weeks before the season they say look this is who is going to be game plan for him if you want to he was here for five games last year this is Ty Smith we're going to go out there and we're going to win go Bears right like like that's that's what it feels like in a day and age when everybody else takes down to two days before uh the game day like I don't know who is gonna be you're gonna have the game plan for Todd Smith you're gonna came game plan for Dominique Anthony you got the game plan for Deuce Taylor no it is the Todd Smith era as it should be Morgan State is looking to have the only young centerpiece at quarterback after this season in the entirety of the MEAC I can't wait the Todd Smith era has begun now on tomorrow's episode we for sure will get to norfolk state and the fact that they've flown under the radar i think having two fan view topics to open up the week really drives that point home nobody's really talking about norfolk state it's all about fam you and hello i'm guilty of that but until the next time that we hear each other family take care stay blessed peace